Well, my name is Chris Swainston and I work for Soils Limited, uh, based in Winchester at the moment, and I'm the Principal Geo-Environmental Engineer. I'm Anna Hitchmo and I'm an Associate Technical Director at RSK. I'm an Environmental Engineer. My job day-to-day -day involves going out onto sites, collecting environmental data, so that's collecting samples of soils, water, air, uh, and then taking that information and synthesising it into um, answers to contaminate land problems. First of all, I write technical reports um, in consultation you know, that clients need in order to develop, redevelop contaminated land. Um, I also liaise with regulatory authorities um, to make sure that the work that's being done to assess contaminated land meets their requirements. I think of myself really as I suppose a storyteller at heart and what I do for a living is storytelling. Uh, I write and investigate sites and locations, I look at the history of them. Every site is unique and you, you get to tell a new story every time. I joined as a general graduate uh, environmental consultant so as part of that I did a lot of different things and it's one of the benefits of consultancy that it allows you to kind of sample a lot of different things and contaminated land was the most interesting it's very variable like I said previously with all the different types of contaminants and can be in different settings, different people and different projects, different goals and different needs. So yeah, there's a lot of variety day to day. It's nice and tangible that you can see the benefit that you're having to the environment as you go through a project. So you can start and you can see that the land is, you know, when you look at it, there's oils, there's, you know, discoloration, there's staining, there's evidence that there is um, detrimental impact and then as you work through from project inception to completion you can just see that improvement in the environment around you. Okay so um, I've got quite a few qualifications but you don't need to have as many as I've got. Uh, so I, get, I first of all I did A levels in Maths, Physics and Chemistry. Um, I did a degree in Geology at Durham University. Then I did an MSc in Engineering Hydrology at um, at Newcastle University and to be honest I could have stopped there but then I did a PhD in hydrogeology at the University of Birmingham so I became a chartered geologist about 15 years ago um, and that helps to raise your profile of being a, comp a com what's called a competent geologist so that employers and employees and clients know that you can do a good job. What I think you need more than anything I think really is a desire to know and interest um, I think that's what is perhaps more important than anything because there's very little out there that will actually teach you or train you to do what we actually do uh, in the environmental field, certainly in the uh, contaminated land field especially. My favourite part of my job is I, I really like being outdoors and doing the kind of uh, the um, the dirty work as it were, getting out there, collecting the samples, being outside, working with people who are generally, you know, really interested. It's just putting the pieces of the puzzle together, it's a lot of fun, you know, going out there and collecting that data yourself and taking that and forming an understanding and then a solution and often being able to do that from inception to completion is, you know, it's quite satisfying. My, my favourite part of the job is mentoring people and helping people to you know, progress in their career. Uh, I really, in another life I might have been a teacher, so I enjoy bringing people on and getting people, you know, helping people to understand what they've got to do and how to, how to progress their own careers. Perhaps my most bizarre moment, I think, was after Bunsfield went up. Uh, the Environment Agency who we were working for uh, wanted us to go along because it's unfortunately directly on top of Three Valleys Waters Chalk Aquifer and so 
there was a worry that all the foam and stuff like that might be getting into the water supply uh, and this, that and the other. And so we had to go around and take some samples uh, from there. And it was like walking into a silent black and white war movie because there was no sound, there was no green, there was no nothing. Uh, and it was just like walking in a black and white movie. It was just the most bizarre situation I think I've ever been in. It was just weirdly wonderful. Probably one of my first bosses uh, gave me probably the most useful piece of advice ever, I think. Um, five minutes thought will save you an hour's effort. When you're there, you're trying to work out the model in your head, you're looking at all these numbers, trying to work out what they mean. Take five minutes out to think about well, what does that actually mean in context? What does it mean? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm passionate about the environment. I've always loved being outdoors. I think it's a really important thing, um, particularly in our modern world, and uh, even more so going forward into the future. And I think uh, doing what I do allows me to be a kind of tangible part of that. And yeah, it makes me feel I'm doing something good. The reason it's important for people to come into field contaminated land is that there's a real need for people. Um, there's a kind of a, a, a shortage of people. Um, it's, if you have a scientific mindset and if you're interested in the environment, um, it's a really good way to mesh those two interests together. And, you know, there are jobs out there and the environment, we, you know, we need to protect our environment so you, you know, you get the opportunity to be at the, um, the, the front edge of that. I think people should work in contaminated land because it's genuinely important. The, the, the fundamental part of it is protecting human and environmental health. And, you know, there are a lot of contaminated sites in the UK, a lot of brownfield developments. There's all sorts of reasons why brownfield redevelopment is preferential in many different ways and contaminated land is an intrinsic part of that, being able to, you know, responsibly clean up that land.